Hey everyone, my name is Lauren Ekstrom, and this is a 60 minute live practice in which we really changed the pace. We took time by starting with some gentle yoga, transitioned into yin yoga, and then closed practice with a little bit of restorative yoga and meditation. I hope you enjoy. Be sure to click subscribe below. And if you'd like to join these practices for free every week, sign up for my newsletter at laurenextrom.com. Thank you, and I will see you at the end. I'm gonna invite you to have two blocks somewhere near your mat. So if you don't have those, you might grab them. As always, if you don't have blocks, you can use a couple of big books instead. And if you have it, you might grab a yoga bolster. And the same thing here, if you don't have a bolster, you never need a bolster to practice yoga. You can use a folded up large blanket or some firm pillows and stack those up instead. But today's practice is gonna be a really sweet holistic combination. We'll start with some gentle movement. We'll move into some yin yoga, and then we'll end with a little bit of restorative yoga and meditation today. So with all of that in place, in your own time, take as much time as you need. Place your feet flat to the earth and then recline onto your back. Open your feet wider than your hips. And as you drop your head back, lay one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly and allow your eyes to close close if that feels appropriate and right to you as you land on your mat. And taking a moment here as you arrive inside of yourself and within this community, resting your hands on your body and just simply noticing your body being breathed. There's nothing that you need to do. There's nothing that you need to make happen. How beautiful it is to rest for a moment in this deep state of trust that this body is a safe place to be in. And this body knows how to be breathed. And as you sense your breath rising and falling, maybe into one or both of your hands, to take your attention even further within yourself, down deep, maybe into your belly, deep into that seed of the heart. And to set this intention together as a collective, to enter into this practice for one reason and one reason alone, to rise up and care for every part of yourself. You're not here to do this practice for anyone else. It's not a display or a show. You don't need any external validation. And even though you might leave this practice and the benefits of it might reach the people that you're spending time with this weekend, you step onto your mat first and foremost to care for yourself. There's no one to please. There's no one to impress. And there's nothing that you should or have to do. And so just from that place, take a full deep inhale through your nose and open your mouth, exhale, let it go. And two more times, full deep breath down and into the body. Out the mouth, let it go. One more time, maybe biggest breath yet today. And maybe with a little sound, sigh it out. 
starting to draw the breath in through the nose and along the back of the throat. A very soft sound of ujjayi, reach down and hug and squeeze the knees into the chest, just welcoming yourself even further in. You might rock a little bit side to side as if to massage, not just the sacrum, but the kidney band down and into the mat. And for a moment, as you come through the center, a soft, happy baby pose. So as you send the soles of the feet to the sky, you might just reach down and catch the shins just below the ankles instead. You might catch the outer edges of the feet. And for some people, just catch behind the knees and find a place for you that feels sustainable. And you might continue to rock ever so slowly in that place, side to side, left and right. And sense today as we enter into this journey together, can you be a little bit countercultural? Maybe even in some ways, could your practice be subversive? that so much of the messaging of our culture is more, faster, better, longer, stronger, harder. And what if today you took a stand inside of yourself as if to hold up a hand and say, not today, I will live life slowly. And to really have a deep sense of trust that when we live life slowly, we actually get to experience more of life. It's not just rushing past us. With your breath slow, come back through the center. If you've been rocking, pause for a moment in stillness, feeling yourself settling. Then hug your knees back into your chest. And if it's appropriate for you, start to rock forward and back from the base of the spine to the upper back a couple of times as if to just massage the back body. Eventually rock all the way up. You might cross the ankles and roll to hands and knees or sweep the feet to one side, coming into tabletop pose. Then with the hands a little bit ahead of the shoulders, join the big toes, separate the knees and press back into child's pose. Drop the forehead to the earth if it reaches. If it doesn't, you could stack the hands, the forearms or use a block instead. And then with the tops of the feet on the earth, the shins to the earth, the palms of the hands pressing down into the mat, deepen the breath again, down into the sides of the body, down across the low back and press into the hands as if you could press your sitting bones back, getting just a little bit longer and deepening the fold of the crease of the pelvis over the thighs. And as you pause in this place, take another deep inhale through the nose and open the mouth again, let it go. Not an inhale, we'll roll so that we're sitting back on the heels, you're resting on the knees, circle the arms to the sky, take a deep breath in, we're going to enter into a slow flow here, sweep the arms up and overhead. And then exhale, draw the backs of the thumbs down toward the heart, draw the palms together at that gesture of Anjali. Circle the arms back up toward the sky, take a deep inhale, reach up, and then turn the palms forward. And as you exhale, lean the torso forward, plant the hands down, snake the belly through, down onto the earth. Use the inhale to come into a baby cobra, elbows in, shoulders back, no hurry, no rush. Exhale, lengthen and lower all the way back down, heart, chest, chin to the mat. On an inhale, press back onto the knees. And then as you exhale, tuck the toes and shift back to downward facing dog. Pause in downward facing dog. Take a moment here just before we start to link all of these movements together into a flow to establish yourself in this body that you have today, which might feel really different than the body that you had last week, or even the body that you had last year. Things are always shifting and changing and our yoga practice invites us to be adaptable into this moment that we find ourselves in. On an inhale, float the right leg up, maybe parallel to the earth. And as you exhale, step the right foot through and lower the back left knee down onto the mat. 
Coming into a low lunge, inhale, circle the arms to the sky, take a deep breath in, reach up, maybe arch back. And then spread the arms out as you exhale and lay the fingertips back down, framing the front foot. With the back toes tucked, inhale, lift the left knee up and off the mat, pull the heart forward, then exhale, step forward to the top of the mat and fold in half. To the sky, inhale, circle and rise all the way up to stand, inhale. And then dive right back down as you exhale, fold over the thighs, drop the head. Flat back, inhale, maybe hands to shins, lift the torso up parallel to the mat, feel the navel lift, the heart extend. And then exhale, fold back in, drop the head. Step the right toes to the back of the mat, drop the right knee down onto the earth. Low lunge, inhale, circle the arms out and up, big circle with the arms, like you're carving this big circle around yourself, like a big healing safe bubble. Then exhale, circle the arms back down toward the mat, frame the front foot once again. Inhale, lift the back right knee, and then exhale, step back to downward facing dog. Now we link it together. Inhale forward to upper push-up plank, one breath, one movement. Child's pose as you exhale, knees down, big toes together, press the hips back toward the heels. Resting on the heels, inhale, circle the arms to the sky, knees still on the mat, maybe if that's okay for you, sweep the arms above. Exhale, draw the hands down to the heart space. Inhale, circle the arms up, reach up, gaze up. Turn the palms forward as you exhale, lay the torso down and snake the belly all the way through onto the mat. Baby cobra, inhale, shoulders roll, heart lifts, no rush. Lengthen to lower, exhale, heart, chest, and chin to the mat. Tabletop pose on an inhale. Downward facing dog as you exhale. This time, left leg lifts, inhale up and off the mat. Exhale, step the left foot through, drop the right knee down to the mat. Circle the arms up, inhale to your low lunge. Circle the arms down, exhale, frame the front foot. Lift the back right knee, inhale. Step forward, fold, top of the mat, exhale. Flat back, inhale, heart forward, long spine. Exhale, fold, drop the head. To the sky, inhale, press through the feet, enter back into the body, reach the arms up, grow tall. Dive right back down as you exhale, fold back over, strong legs. Flat back once again, inhale, lifting the sides of the waist. Fold as you exhale and step the left toes to the back of the mat and drop the knee behind the hip. Inhale, back to your low lunge, arms sweep up, reach up, gaze up. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Inhale, back knee lifts. Down dog, exhale, right foot steps back. Plank pose on an inhale. You could always modify, do tabletop instead. Child's pose as you exhale, knees down, hips back. One more time, right and left side. Inhale, sitting on the heels, circle the arms up, reach up, gaze up. Back to your heart, exhale where it matters most, moving closer to what matters with each breath. Inhale, sweep up, gaze up. Exhale, palms forward, snake the belly all the way back down onto the mat. Cobra, inhale, maybe you find a little extra lift. Exhale, heart, chest, and chin rest. Tabletop pose, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Right leg lifts, inhale. Right foot through, back knee down, exhale. Low lunge, inhale, one breath, you rise. Hands down, exhale, frame the front foot. Back knee lifts, inhale, long spine. Step forward, top of the mat, fold on the out breath. Flat back, inhale, make space. Exhale, fold and empty back out. To the sky, inhale, press through the feet. Fill the frame of your body with your breath. Dive right back down, exhale as if to get out of your head. Inhale, heart forward and shoulders back. Exhale, fold and step the right toes back. Drop the right knee to the mat. Inhale, circle the arms up, reach up, gaze up. Exhale, hands down to the earth. Inhale, back knee lifts. Down dog, exhale, step the left foot back. 
Plank pose, inhale, shoulders above wrists. Child's pose, exhale, press your way back. Inhale, kneeling on the knees. Last time, sweep the arms above. Hands to the heart space, exhale, connect within. Inhale, circle the arms up, reach up. No one to please except yourself. Exhale, turn the palms forward, snake the belly down, resting on the mat. Inhale, cobra elbows, hug in, drag the heart ahead. Exhale, feel yourself get longer as you rest to the mat. Inhale as you press to the knees. Exhale as you press to down dog. Last cycle, left leg lifts, inhale. Left foot through, exhale. Low lunge, inhale, sweep and rise. Exhale, circle the hands down. Inhale, right knee floats up. Exhale, right foot steps up to meet left. Flat back, deep breath in. Forward fold, deep breath out. Circle and rise to the sky. Inhale, press through the feet. Reach up, grow long. Fill yourself with awareness. Dive down, exhale, empty yourself out. Inhale, maybe hands to shins, nowhere to get to. Exhale, fold and step the left toes back, drop the left knee to the mat. Last low lunge, inhale, sweep and rise high. Exhale, plant the hands down. Inhale, lift the left knee. Exhale, step to downward facing dog and pause there. Take a couple of breaths, hands rooted on the mat. Pads of the feet, resting into the mat. For some people, maybe the heels, that is not universal. Take a moment, be with yourself. Notice why you're doing what you're doing. This is part of the medicine. If we've become addicted to pleasing other people with our actions, or external validation, we start to just simply become aware, why am I doing what I'm doing? Does this serve what I'm needing today, my higher purpose, a place of loving awareness? We're not going to keep using other people's actions, but through awareness, we can start making some different choices. And it starts here in the body. Take an inhale, press the hips up and back. Exhale, bend the knees, step the feet up to meet the hands folding top of the mat. Chest out, inhale, what we call Ardha Uttanasana, make some space. Exhale, fold. You could even put a generous bend in the knees, and then let's all do that. Bend the knees and into a soft chair pose. Circle the arms up. Shift the weight to the heels. Let it be a soft chair pose. What is it like to do something 70%? You know, we live in this time in this space that says it needs to be not just 100, but 110. And what if instead you just backed way off? And then breathe through the nose and maybe this time out of the mouth, knowing that those out the mouth exhales often help to release just some tension in the jaw, some things we've been holding on to. Take one more deep inhale, reach up, and then exhale, fold. And that's our only chair today. So that might be really nice to acknowledge. Flat back, inhale, pull the chest forward and out. Exhale, plant the hands down as you fold and step straight back to downward facing dog. Float the right leg up on an inhale, turn the right toes to the right, lift the right leg a little higher, and then bend the right knee and stack the right hip on top of the left. Take a couple of breaths here into the seat of the body down into the right hip. And just simply notice, did you swing your heart to the right? And instead, could you keep the upper body in downward facing dog? So you roll the right waist back. You roll the chest toward the back of the mat. So that might mean that you don't get the hip quite as open as you'd like. And you take care of yourself. So the upper body stays in down dog. Give it one last little moment there. Then square the hip back off, take an inhale, reach the right leg back, turn the five right toes down to the mat. And as you exhale, step the right foot, foot flat, setting up for warrior one. Ground through the feet and inhale, circle the arms to the sky. Turn the outer left hip forward, draw the right waist back. So in some way, kind of similar to that motion that you found a little bit in that variation of downward facing dog. Take the right hand to the left wrist. 
Grow tall through the left waist as if you could lift the left arm up a little bit. Take an inhale here, then lean to the right as you exhale. Take the left arm up and overhead. So with the blade of the back left foot pressing down in warrior one, we get a little more into the left side psoas. And there's been some research done that shows that when we have a little more openness in our psoas, it actually helps to remedy some of that lingering depression. And the people who have some more openness in their psoas have a little bit of a lighter mood, which is really interesting. So a little bit of why I try to integrate it into each practice for us. Back to the center, inhale, reach up, separate the hands, first warrior. Open up into warrior two as you exhale. Front heel intersects the back arch and we're not gonna be here for long. Descend down into the front right thigh and then that same invitation that we extended in your chair pose, what if you did your warrior two 70% today? Maybe you back off a little bit. The knee does not need to be right over the ankle. You could pull back and still feel strength in the body. Take the left hand forward to the right wrist and then holding the right wrist, reverse your warrior here, inhale. Drawing the right arm up and overhead, lifting the right hip up to the extent that you can and leaning back. And then keeping that, just straighten the front right leg. So you come into a reverse version of triangle and as you hold that left wrist, kind of like you're giving yourself an adjustment. Take one more inhale to lean back. Then then exhale, lift the torso up through the center, spread the arms out wide, turn the palms to face the earth. Pivot the right toes in to mirror the left and then reach the right arm straight up to the sky. Bend the right elbow, tap the right hand between the shoulder blades and today let the left hand rest on the right elbow for support. Drop the tail down a little. Take an inhale, lean back a tiny bit and exhale, fold between the legs to the extent that's available for you. Maybe close your eyes. Your job is not to get the crown of your head or your right elbow to the floor. Your job is to be in the pose, in the body, in the body of sensations and the experience of the breath that's right here for you today. So if we want to heal this addiction to pleasing people, we have to heal our addiction to having an agenda. And so an agendaless practice to be here for the one deep intention that as you stay present, moment to moment, breath to breath, you are moving closer to what matters. Keep the arms as they are. Send the heart forward and inhale, rise all the way back up, crown of the head to the sky. As you exhale, release the arms out to the sides and then circle the wrists as you drop the arms all the way back down. And as the arms drop down, inhale, sweep the arms back up to the sky and back into warrior two as you exhale. Pivot the right toes forward, spread the arms, take a deep breath in. Cartwheel the hands down as you exhale, spin onto your back left toes and heel toe the right foot to the right. With your left hand underneath your left shoulder, circle your right arm to the sky. I know we have some pregnant mamas joining us today. So if you're in your second or third trimester, just get really wide here. And if you're in your first trimester, I'll invite you to keep your right hand down onto the earth. From either space, lean back, open up, take a big inhale, spread the heart, spread the chest, and then exhale, plant the right hand down onto the mat. And again, just step back to downward facing dog. Inhale forward to upper push up plank. Exhale, lower the right knee down onto the mat under the right hip, spin the sole of the left foot flat and circle the left arm to the sky. Drop the left hand behind the head here today. Lean the back of the skull into the palm of the left hand like you could wing the left elbow to the sky. Let the left underarm open the left side of the chest, all of that space from the heart across the collarbone. Notice your breath. Notice that in a moment of physical balance, you're not holding or restricting your breath. You're letting yourself experience it all maybe even including the imbalance or the fall. Inhale, reach your left arm back up to the sky. Exhale, place your left hand down, spin to your back left toes, and then step your right toes back. Pause and plank, hold plank for a moment. 
and press back to downward facing dog on the out breath. In downward facing dog, take a deep inhale through the nose. Stick the tongue out, exhale. Notice if you held back with that lion's breath, take a deep inhale. Don't be afraid, make some noise. Stick some tongues out. Let it all go, little smile on the face. On an inhale, float the left leg up. Turn the left toes to the left, lift the leg a little high, stack and open the hip. Keep descending the right heel toward the earth. And again, just based on our anatomy and our personal history, the grounded heel might not ever, that's okay. You're still a yogi. You still have a valuable and worthy practice. And there's just that energy of that movement toward the earth. And that's the only thing that matters that you have that level of awareness, making space. Keep grounding the hands, keep wrapping the left side of the chest back so you stay in downward facing dog in the upper body. On your inhale, square off the left hip, reach the left leg back, turn the left toes down toward the earth. Then exhale, float, step the left foot through, spin the back right foot flat, rise up, inhale, first warrior. Only one today. Stand down into your legs and for a moment, maybe close your eyes. What do you stand for today? Can you live life slowly? and trust that it is a life worth living, that you're not gonna miss out on anything, that there's no need to feed into the urgency, the speed that so often permeates our days. Reach the left hand to the right wrist, grow a little bit taller, take an inhale, like you can fill the right lung with more breath, then lean to the left as you exhale, take that right arm up and over, still standing strong into the back leg, and it's almost symbolic of not forgetting our past, but really using the lessons of the past to help us move more consciously into what's ahead of us. So that back leg, like your anchor of awareness. Give it one last little reach. Back to warrior one, inhale, reach up, gaze up. Open up warrior two on your out breath. Front heel intersects the back arch. Relax the fingertips. You know, so often we come into warrior two and we're reaching so hard that the fingers flare up toward the sky. And what ends up happening is the muscles in the forearms get really tight and tense. So can you be in a strong warrior two and also relax the hands so that from the shoulder all the way across the fingernails, it's one long line of energy, not a line of energy that arcs up to the sky. So free of tension. Sweep the right hand forward, catch the left wrist, reverse your warrior on an inhale, leaning back. Now breathing into the left lung. As you lift the left hip up, maybe you sit a little bit deeper and straighten the front left leg, inhale. Come up through the center, shoulders above the hips, spread the arms out wide, palms face the earth. Pivot the left toes in to mirror the right, parallel the outer edges of the feet. Reach the left arm up to the sky, bend the elbow, tap the left hand between the shoulder blades, rest the right hand on the left elbow. Take an inhale, maybe lean back, let the heart, the chest open and spread, but notice that the tail still reaches down, the navel still lifts up, so you're not dumping into the low back. From there, exhale, pour the torso forward, and you might even put a bend into the knees here. Drop yourself in, not just into the pose, but a little deeper into what's here for you today. What's asking for your kind attention, your deep listening, not a fixing kind of attention, right? You can notice that the heart's a little heavy or the mind's a little busy and you don't need to fix it. It's enough just to notice that that information gained through your practice is going to inform how you navigate the rest of your day. You'll be a little bit more tender with yourself. And then as a result of that, maybe a little bit more tender with others. Scoop the heart forward, inhale, rise all the way back up. And exhale as you spread the arms out, circle the wrists all the way down to the sides. 
you might go both directions. The wrist just gets so, so tight. Inhale, circle the arms all the way back up. Second warrior, back to your left leg. Turn the left toes forward, spread the arms out, deep breath in. Cartwheel the hands down as you exhale, pivot onto your back right toes. Heel toe the left foot to the left a little bit. Right hand under the right shoulder, inhale the left arm to the sky. So you get a little ringing out. Again, if you're pregnant or even if you're just trying to get pregnant, keep it very, very wide. So you're gonna move that left foot as far to the left as you can, lots of space for the belly. Take one more inhale, lean back, open up. Exhale, plant the left hand down, step back to downward facing dog for the second to last time. Inhale forward, upper push up plank. Exhale, lower the left knee underneath the left hip this time. Spin the back foot flat, circle the right arm to the sky and drop the right hand behind the head. Press the back of the skull into the hand, let the right side of the chest flare open. And as the right elbow points to the sky, imagine that you could breathe all the way into the right side waist, into the right armpit, up and under the right shoulder blade, across the right collarbone. Give it one last little moment there. Inhale, reach your right arm to the sky. Exhale, place your right hand to the mat, spin to your right toes, step back to your last plank, take an inhale, and press back to down dog as you exhale. One more time, deep inhale through the nose. Stick the tongue out. Through the nose, inhale. Knees to the earth, exhale. Crawl the knees forward, cross the ankles behind you or sweep the feet around you. Come to sitting on your sitting bones. Bring the soles of the feet together and move the heels forward away from the body. So into a wide diamond shape. Take a hold of the shins, lift the heart, take an inhale here, and then exhale, pour your way forward and down. Some of us might put the hands on the feet and drop the head down. Your head does not need to rest on your feet in this lifetime or ever. You could take blocks instead. You could use a block and have a place for the forehead to rest. And just find a place for yourself where you can be. If you can, I'll invite you to close your eyes. And we'll be here for several moments. And in this moment, let's just use the support of the breath to help the mind enter into this shift. So take an inhale through the nose. Open the mouth, let it go. Through the nose, inhale for one two, three, four. Out the nose, exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, Four, one continuous breath, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last time, inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take a deep breath in and open the mouth. Exhale, let it go. On an inhale, slowly roll yourself all the way back up. Pause at the top, take your right hand outside of your right knee and spin the sole of your right foot flat. And then take your right foot and draw your right foot back by your right hip. 
take your left hand outside of your left knee, spin the sole of your left foot flat. So your knee points up toward the sky, right knee pointing forward. So you're in half of a Virasana. And then you might take your blocks back behind you, one at the medium height and one underneath your head. So the medium height block will land underneath your shoulder blades and the higher height block will land underneath the back of your head. Drop your arms down by your sides. You can also do this reclining all the way onto the floor if that's available for your body and feels more appropriate and right. And touching into, especially here, the right quadricep, the whole front side of that right thigh. And a place in yoga, and really in life, that simply does not often get enough attention. Let the arms go, let the eyes go. And whether you're supported on blocks or the earth, can you allow yourself to receive that support? Last night I watched a new comedy special <laughs> and Kevin Hart made this joke about how as women, which I know so many of us are who are joining this practice today, not all of us, but how women have such a hard time just sitting still, especially when we're at home. And this feeling that there's always something that we need to be doing, always something Thing that needs to get done, needs our attention and our attending. And whether we identify as male, female, non-binary, we all have those moments of restlessness that get the better of us. And so if that restlessness arises inside of you, just to take a second and take care of yourself. My mantra for the restless one inside of me is, I have time. And so you might just say that to yourself once or twice and slow the breath just to help steady and focus the mind. And in your own time, again, no hurry, no rush, whether you're supported on blocks or the floor, prop yourself onto your elbows, one arm at a time, straighten the arms, sit up right, and then drop the left knee back open to the left, the way that it was before. You're going to lean to the left, unwrap the right leg and swing it all the way around the body and stack the knees coming into Gomukhasana with the knees. Some of us to come into that, we need to come forward onto the hands and knees and hug the inner thighs together. And then as you settle the hips back between the heels, you might rest on the floor or you could even move one of those blocks underneath the hips to bring the floor up to meet you. For a moment, your hands on your feet, deepening that intention to be grounded and present, the feet always in contact with that earth energy. So as if you could draw a little bit of that earth energy into your upper body, your heart, your mind, these places that are further from the earth and sometimes lack that quality. So as if you could just breathe that groundedness into the busier places of life and body. And you might stay here, upright, tall spine, or you might fold over the legs. Again, you could just rest the chin on the knees. You could be right where you are in space. You could invite a block underneath the forehead. There is always a place for you in the body that you're in, in this practice of yoga. And in this life, there's a place for you. Might not look like anybody else's. And isn't that a beautiful thing? You know, Mark Nepo writes, oftentimes we're more interested in sameness than growing. And so it's nice to catch ourselves. When do we get caught wanting to be the same or wanting to stay the same? And just to awaken to the reality that so often that addiction to sameness 
keeps us from our growing edge or the next lesson or opportunity or teacher. How nice it might be to do things in a different way and to honor yourself. Again, it's the medicine to move away from people pleasing. On an inhale, slowly walk your hands back in if you happened to have poured your chest forward. And then lean the hands back as you exhale, lean back onto the sitting bones and release the feet flat to the mat. Fingertips can point forward or back behind you, really depends on the shoulders and the wrists. And one time into upward facing tabletop pose, inhale, lift the hips. Exhale, lower the hips back down. And then this time, take the top of the left foot, draw it back by the left hip. Right foot's going to stay exactly where it is and recline back your own amount. Maybe those blocks are still there behind you to support you. One block under the heart, under the shoulder blades, one block underneath the back of the head. You can also just place the hands behind you, resting on straight arms or elbows or reclining onto the back. And then to the extent that it's possible today, turn the palms down onto the earth. And you might just check in, have you gotten a little stagnant? And do you need a couple of breaths out of the mouth just to help move energy, not to run away from what might be arising, just to help things move? And for some people, it might even help to rock the head a little bit, side to side, left to right, like you could massage the back of the head into the floor, a block, or if you're sitting upright, just rocking the head side to side and getting into the sides of the neck. And then notice what happened to the shoulders. Did they sneak up to the ears and can you drop them down again? As if resting in this pose, in this moment, you could do just the tiniest bit of a body scan. And from the crown of the head all the way down through the fingertips and the toes, where can you soften again? Noticing if you're tensing against gravity or if you're tensing against sensation. To the extent that's possible today, where can you soften just a little bit? Where can you invite in a little more receptivity? And then planting the palms down. You might walk the hands back a little bit, pressing into the elbows, straightening one arm at a time as you press down into the hands, lift the chest up right. Drop the right knee open to the right once again, lean to the right, and then sweep the left knee on top of the right knee, stacking the knees into Gomukhasana. So we get some of that internal rotation of the pelvis today. Again, just a direction of movement that we so often lack in these human bodies. You might place the hands on the feet again, sit up tall, sit up right. And just because the pose looked one way on one side does not mean it's gonna be symmetrical on this side. So before you drop into your version of it today, come into it from a place of awareness. Is that what you need to fold forward? Is that really what you need? Is that really what your body is asking for? Why are you doing what you're doing? And this is why life asks us not to speed up, but actually to slow down. And then once you've gotten that gauge, clear seeing, which is really the heart of meditation and of yoga, you make a decision that's right for you. Not a teacher, not someone else you see on the screen or how you've seen the pose done before. And maybe you stay right where you are, or maybe you fold yourself forward for no other reason than you were listening closely to yourself. And you know, you're just here for a little bit. 
not here for a long time. So this is why slowing down helps to support us and making each moment count. If you happen to have bowed forward, walk the hands back in, lean the hands back behind you, lean back, unwrap the leg, soles of the feet to the mat. One more time, upward facing tabletop pose, press into the hands, lift the hips, chest opens, ground the thumb, the first finger into the mat, take an in breath. Exhale, lower the sitting bones down one time, reach the legs straight forward. They don't need to be straight. You could have a bend in the knees, circle the arms up, inhale, fold over your version of straight legs, bow down and in. And drop the chin. Soften the jaw. <laughs> So funny the way the body rises up to protect us. All the things, all the sneaky things that the body does. Tension in the eyes, the corners of the mouth. And it's as if with each softening and with each breath, you're telling the body, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, let go. I'm here, I'm listening, I'm attending, you're safe. You're safe. And on an inhale, roll all the way back up. And keeping the blocks behind you or setting them up in that way, one at the medium height, one at the high height, Take your bolster, make a ramp, and then turn away from your ramp. And especially if you're tall, you're gonna move your sacrum away from the base of the bolster so that as you recline back, the back of your head is supported on the bolster. So you're not in a back bend. Your head is not flying back. Drop the arms down by the sides, and then maybe you bring the soles of the feet back together again and coming into some external rotation of the hips. If for any reason that's too much for you or it's not right, then just come back to where we started practice, feet flat and wide and drop the knees in to touch. And then as you land here in this place, just a couple of moments in this restorative shape. And restorative yoga, is an agendaless practice, not trying to get a deeper stretch. And one of the first introductions for many people into the more meditative styles of practice. And so you adopt what we call pratyahara. You turn all of your senses inward your eyes, your ears, as if you could listen inside of yourself. You're not here to stop the mind from thinking. You're not here to stop the heart or the body from feeling. It's like a loving mother just here holding it all, your presence able to hold all of what might be arising. The sounds close in in your environment or the distractions at a distance. Everything about this moment, it belongs and it's here as a teacher. And there's a courageous part of you that stays, that says, oh, Yes, I'm willing, willing to listen. Doesn't mean we have to agree when we listen, right? This is an important reminder. We can listen, 
We can not like what we're hearing and we can stay with it. We can be with it, all of it. And so if we're going to stop ourselves from pleasing other people all of the time, if we're going to learn to show up in life in a new way, to stop abandoning our own needs, turning away from ourselves, it starts right here in poses like this in this practice where you can listen to every part of you because it's going to probably be uncomfortable to be in a pose for a sustained period of time or to do things in a new way. To say no to people who you're so used to saying yes to. The discomfort we learn to be with in yoga is such a profound teacher. And if the soles of the feet are together, reach the hands down outside the knees, spin the soles of the feet flat, point the knees back to the sky. Drop the arms down by the sides, press into the hands and rise all the way up to sit. As you rise to sit, take your bolster off of your blocks, move your blocks off to the side. And then cross your legs and sit up tall. If you need support underneath the hips, you could always move your bolster underneath your sitting bones for support. And then place your palms face down onto your knees. Close the eyes once again, if it's appropriate and right, or drop the gaze down and out a couple of feet. And one cleansing breath together, take a deep inhale through the nose. and open the mouth, exhale and let it go. To sit with yourself. To sit with your body being breathed. And in this moment to turn your attention towards your heart. What is the deepest intention of your heart in this moment today? What is the deepest intention of your heart for your practice today? And as you hear that voice within, listen to it, attend to it. Hear that intention and set it for yourself, this deep personal intention for your presence, the quality of your presence and your practice today. And once that intention is set, let it go. Almost like you've planted a seed in the heart Art and trusting that it's there. And as you sit with yourself, each moment of willingness, each moment of stillness, each moment that you turn back toward yourself, you're watering that seed one breath at a time. And we won't be here. And so you might notice the space of your heart around your heart the breath rising and falling in and around that place. And just for a moment, breathing in, you know you're breathing in. And breathing out, you know you're breathing out. And if you would like to stay here in meditation for the close of your practice today, you may. 
or keeping your eyes closed, you might recline onto the back and place your bolster underneath your knees for a final restorative variation of Shavasana as you recline onto your back. And whatever you choose, trusting and staying there these last couple of moments. Mark Nepo writes, there is a dangerous form of not listening that plagues the modern world. It speaks to our filler up society in which we think eating will keep us from the threshold of emptiness and noise will keep us from the threshold of silence and adventure will keep us from the threshold of being ordinary. When all the while it's through the thresholds of emptiness, silence and being ordinary that the true gifts of being alive wait to be discovered. And so to rest in emptiness, silence and your very deep ordinariness and to feel that full sense of being alive, being in so many ways rediscovered. And Shavasana, as you rest these last couple of moments, And allowing this next breath to be just a little bit more full and deep. If you're on the back, stretching the arms up and over the head, reaching through the toes, drawing the knees in and curling to one side for a moment. And in your own time, pressing down into your hands and rising to find a final seat. Joining the palms together at the space of the heart, backs of the thumbs connected to the front of the heart as you bow the chin down and in. In gratitude to yourself for showing up. In gratitude to your practice for all of the joy and awareness that it brings to your life. And in gratitude to the collective, this reminder that we are in this together. And each time we show up, we step into what might be possible. Knowing that what happens on your mat stays in your life. Inhale the backs of your thumbs to your forehead for clarity of thought your fingertips to your lips for thoughtfulness of speech and your hands to your heart for consistency of action, allowing your practice to guide you through everything you're thinking, saying, and doing. 
Take a final deep breath in through your nose and open your mouth, exhale, let it go. I hope you enjoyed that change of pace. If you enjoyed this practice, be sure to click subscribe below and visit me at laurenextrum.com where you can sign up for my newsletter and join these practices for free every single week. If you'd like to experience more of my classes, be sure to visit me at Inner Dimension TV where you can find all of my yoga programs, audio meditation series, wisdom talks, and so much more. Thank you again for practicing with me. Be sure to click subscribe below and I look forward to seeing you next time.